All right, we'll close out with uh, with UNLV here. Uh, UNLV, that's a this is a tricky one, right? Very tricky. Uh, Marcus, I got them a little better than I originally thought. That's a, well, so they went two and ten last year. Um, yeah, which was better than that. Yeah, so they they were two and ten last year. Uh, the post game win expectancy really said they should have been three and nine, but uh, you know they went eight and four against the spread. They were pretty good. They they did really well. Uh, with two touchdown wins over Hawaii and New Mexico, they scared three uh, Mountain West contenders last year. Yeah, like they were they were in some ball games that they maybe should not have been in, and it had nothing to do with their offense. Like Marcus Arroyo was the OC at Oregon when, um, oh my God, what's the quarterback's name? Uh, uh, that plays for the Chargers. Herbert? Yes, Justin Herbert. Justin he was, Herbert? He was the OC okay. at Oregon for Justin Herbert, uh, which led everybody to think, man, we should probably be betting against Marcus Arroyo because if his thing is offense and he couldn't figure out how to use Justin Herbert, then <laughs> how is he going to lead a program? But uh, in this situation here, like let's let's talk about the offense first. Well, they, they're big losses. They lost running back uh, Charles Williams. They lost wide receiver Steve Jenkins. Uh, and they lost defensive end Jacoby Windman. Um, let's start off with the offense. Pretty much anything is an improvement. They were number 109 in offensive PPA per drive last year, 121 in rushing success rate, number 110 in passing success rate. But with as few plays as they had on offense, they ended up number nine in the country in offensive explosive play rate. Now, the reason why is because they did not have the ball that much. Like, that's <laughs> that's the biggest thing. So when they did hit big plays... Uh, the ratio was thrown off, right? So that's that's why it looks a little crazy. Um, they pretty much anything is going to be an improvement on offense. They brought in quarterback Harrison Bailey, who was at Tennessee, and Bailey, like, can he beat out Cameron Friel for the job? That's the question. Friel was a freshman last year and won the starting job. Ended up starting, I think, seven games. Uh, they've got three guys that played meaningful snaps last year. And they never really settled on any of them. Like, Friel was the closest thing to settling as they could, but I think Harrison Bailey can beat him out. Uh, the other part is you got to limit the turnovers, and you got to find a playmaker somewhere. They don't have any playmakers on this team, at least from last year. Uh, the wide receiver, Kyle Williams, did show some flashes last year, but he, you know, eh, we'll, we'll see what he ends up doing this year. Uh, as far as the defense, decent against the run. Uh, they were number 30 in defensive rushing success rate allowed. But, man... Um, I think that had to do with the fact that everybody could pass on them because they were number 121 in passing success rate allowed. Uh, the front seven looks promising. They need experienced secondary to play above their heads this year. They've got four players with 400-plus snaps back. Uh, you know, give me give me your thoughts on Arroyo's uh, third bunch here. I, I think they're going to be much improved from last year, and I used the word much, uh, I think, correctly. I got them four and eight, Gary. I think this team's going to be better. I think they're still going to be a bad football team. But I think they're going to be better than the seller that they have been. Brother, me and you are in the same boat here. I've got them 4-8. and eight. Uh, My four wins are Idaho State, New Mexico, at Hawaii, and Nevada. I think yeah. this is a – and I think they're going to scare some teams that maybe they've – you know, you wouldn't expect, right? Uh, right. At Utah That's State, right. North Texas, you know, something like that. Uh, could they sneak up and, and beat uh, San Jose State? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I think this is a step in the right direction. Like uh, Arroyo, like at, at some point, like his offense has got to do something. I would imagine. Uh, by the way, big thing about this team. What? Yeah, they they did turn the football over a lot last year, but they were number seven in the country in penalties per game. Really, really good. Like they did not beat themselves a whole lot. They just weren't all that talented. So yeah. that's the mark of a well coached team. Yeah, so I, I would imagine that they do take another step forward. Uh, the keys to the season here leaned a lot on youth last season. They showed a lot of potential with two touchdown wins over Hawaii and New Mexico. And uh, and like I said, they scared three Mountain West uh, title contenders. They This is still a really long rebuild. Uh, the roster strength still sits at number 122 per the guys over at CFB Winning Edge. Uh, how much do transfers like wide receiver Ricky White from Michigan State and the running back Robbins out of Louisville help? Those guys could absolutely be playmakers, uh, and they could flip that offense around quickly, very quickly. quickly. So uh, as far as returning production goes, number 41 in the country, 
number 27 in the country on defense. So they got some experienced guys. Like, this this should be a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, again, step in the right direction. It is a step sure. in the right direction. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.